Welcome to the Flash Finds Podcast, the world's fastest podcast where we explore how Facebook can help you with the stuff you're into. I'm Emma Rogue, joined by Nathan the Cat Lady, a Facebook creator. So Nathan, if you're into pets, what kind of stuff can you find on Facebook? Well, I make reels about useful tips for pet owners. For instance, cats don't like still water, so all of my cats have cat fountains. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. What a great episode. See you next time on the Flash Finds Podcast, all about discovering the stuff on Facebook you care about. Bye. You're commuting home with Cats and Cosby. Now, here's John Katsimatidis and Rita Cosby on 77 WABC. And uh, for more military perspective on all this, uh, we have General Keith Kellogg, uh, former National Security Advisor during the Trump administration. General, your reaction, what do you think uh, is going to happen next? And what do you think the message was with the strike? Yeah, hi, Rita. Thanks for having me. Well, look, here's, here's what you're looking at. It's, it's pretty interesting. First of all, the counterattack by, by Israel um, was really well done, probably on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being bad, 10 being meaning poor, being 10 meaning really good. It was probably out of 7 is where you want to go. But here's what you have to understand. Now. What's happened, in, and you have to sit back and kind of look at it from a national security view, is, okay, first of all, for the first time, the Iranians have attacked Israel direct. The, the, the Israelis responded in kind by going back into Iran. They didn't use surrogates. They used their best weapon systems that they had at the time. And then we basically said, okay, it's kind of game on. So that part of it, is, it now is the old idea of hiding behind surrogates is now gone. So now it's, it's out in the open. The second thing is our level of influence. Our level of influence is the United States isn't there anymore. Remember, this is an administration, the Biden administration, who said to the Iranians, don't, followed by Secretary of State Lincoln saying don't, followed by Secretary of Defense Austin saying don't, and then they did. And then he returned, then the, the Biden administration turned around and said to the Israelis, well, don't do a counterattack, because now you can just say you, you succeeded in defending yourself, and there's no harm, no foul. And that was pretty foolish, because the Israelis did, and they did something pretty well. What you need to be concerned about, though, is that where these missiles and where these attacks took place. And what I mean by that is this, there's a level of close escalation you need to be concerned about. The, uh, when the Iranian missiles came in, they hit uh, Nevatim Air Base. Nevatim Air Base is near a place called Demona. Well, Demona is the Israeli nuclear site. And what happens is the, uh, the Israelis fired right back at the Iranians near Esfahan. And what's at Esfahan? That's one of the nuclear sites for Iran. So you're you're going to a level of escalation that you need to be a little bit concerned about. I happen to agree with what Ambassador Bolton said, is I think what now needs to be done is now the Israelis need to go back in and finish the job. They need to go back into Rafah, finish the job with Hamas, clean them out. They've hesitated, and the reason for the hesitation is the hostages. I I hate to say this, Rita, but you almost reach a point now where after this this long, I don't know how many of the hostages are still alive. I don't know what condition they are. You know, the International Red Cross has not intervened and said, where are they at? How many are still alive? I don't even think Hamas knows. And it's really unfortunate to say that, but I think the Israelis are going to almost have to say, we gave it our best shot. Now we just have to finish the job. So I think uh, this is, is going to continue. Uh, this war is not over. It's going to continue to grow, probably. Uh, Hezbollah is still out there. They're going to eradicate Hamas, which is good. But the, as long as the Iranians are on the scene, this is going to continue. And there's no deterrence. The only people who have established deterrence are the Israelis. We haven't at all, and that's because of our leadership, which is unfortunate, but true. General, any idea from intelligence, and I'm, I'm sure you still get it, you know, three-star general, uh, that how many Hamases are there, how many Hezbollahs are there, and how many Houthis there are? Yeah, you get a, it's a gross number, meaning a generalization. I'll, you, let's just use Hamas as an example. We're pretty sure how many Hamas battalions, fighting battalions, they, they call them Nukba battalions, N-U-K-B-A, and these are the fighters that Hamas has got. The Israelis basically reduced, of the 26 they had, have reduced roughly 20 of them. The remaining six fighting battalions, and when you're talking about fighting battalions, figure two to 300 fighters, there's still four left in Rafa, so they've about cleaned them out. Not only they've cleaned them out, but they've also cleaned out the leadership. You're not going to kill every single terrorist wherever you're at. What you want to do is you want to make the leadership pay a big price and kill the capability for them to do some type of combined operations. So they've got a military organization, they Hamas, and these Nakba battalions that they have to reduce. 
when you look at places that are like sanctuaries, when we're talking about Yemen, where the Houthis are, you don't know how many are there. And with Hezbollah, Hezbollah's got a fairly decent military organization. They've had it for years. But Hezbollah doesn't want to get involved too much. You know, Hezbollah kind of won't, you know, waited this thing out. And the reason is, you know, they're part of actually the government of Lebanon. They hold 13 seats of the 126-person parliament. And, and I think what they're saying is, look, we don't want to get to a big war against Israel because it wipes out any of the gains we've gotten in, into the future in the in the political arena. So what I, I guess what I'm saying it's pretty complicated and pretty complex. I think the biggest thing if I said, well, what would there be the one thing you would do to basically eradicate or eliminate it? You go after the leadership, and that's what. By the way, that's what we did in Iraq years ago when Petraeus was on the ground during the day, you know, killing you know the bad guys, and at night you had Stan McChrystal and JSOC actually going after the leadership really hard. And once you, you know, you reach a point with the leadership, after you go through about seven, you cycle through, let's say, seven or eight levels of leadership, all of a sudden people are going, no, I don't think I want to be a leader today. Thank you very much. It's something similar to uh, when I was talking to President Trump uh, one time, uh, he uh, met with the Taliban and he showed him a picture of, of, uh, of his home with his family in it. And after that, the Taliban uh, was a little bit more... Agreeable. Agreeable. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was there in the, the Oval Office when he talked to Mullah Barada. Barada was the chief negotiator with the Taliban, who, by the way, Trump got out of prison in Pakistan because he had a great relation with Imran Khan, who was the prime minister of Pakistan at the time. And he got him in, and when he talked to him, and it was, on, it was, at, it was translated. You know, I was sitting in the Oval Office listening to the president, and I kept thinking to myself, how is this being translated? Because it was pretty brutal. And he basically said, you know, basically, this is what's going to happen if you don't support us doing the Doha agreement. And honestly enough, after those phone calls, the president had. No, no other American uh, soldier died. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. General so Kellogg, thank you so much. Thank you for your service to our country and you continue to speak out for us. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you, General. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.